Hello, Uranium friends. We are back with episode 16 of Uranium Talk, talking all things Uranium. I am Jungle Funk from the Chart Guys, joined here as always by Chris Red Devil. Chris, how are you? Joseph, I'm fine. How are you, sir? I'm doing good, man. We got a three-day weekend coming at a good time. Kind of needed a little bit of a break. Yes. But here we are recording Uranium Talk because even with a break, there's nothing we'd rather talk about than some stocks. Of course. <laughs> so so uh, what do we got this light, week for news? Yeah, well, it's a light news week, so uh, we're probably going to be pretty quick in general on this video. But uh, <clears throat> first things that we'll talk about is energy fuels. You, 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 two pieces of news for these guys. Uh, they closed on their um, rare earth gig in Brazil. So they've got a property down there in Brazil. And they also, um, the second piece is that, you know, they, they tweeted out and we'll link it for you, but you know, they've, they've got production going of uranium in the United States. So in Q4, um, 162,000 pounds they produce of uranium. <clears throat> the other thing is, is that they've closed the deal on the White Mesa mill, which is basically no surprise to us. Uh, that sale that they they uh, did for Encore. And if you remember, we, Encore did a financing around that also. Uh, so that's you, 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 you. Uh, speaking of financings, URG uh, did a rug pull um, this week and they did a, a, a public offering. Um, I made a whole video dedicated to that and we're going to link that in underneath here. Uh, so you can take a look at that video. It's very similar to the Global Atomic and Encore uh, financing videos. Uh, but I, I, I dig in a little bit deeper uh, on the prospectus there. So take a look at that video if you want to see my um, thoughts on that particular situation. Uh, in reference to Global Atomic, well, another little FUD came up with this lawsuit uh, from some of the uh, indigenous peoples there or the environmentals, environmentalists, and they have issues there. I'm going to link in a Twitter account of a guy who's like intently and very detailed about his following of this situation. So he's got, he's been going on for a couple of days with a thread on that. We'll link that in also. Um Europe, once again, we were talking about the, um, they were talking about banning uh, Russian nuclear fuel. Well, they've decided to scrap that whole plan. And then the United States Senate and the House of Representatives have both introduced some nuclear re related bills so the this and we're going to link those also but the senate is a nuclear fuel security bill and the house has a bill uh that's deliberating on banning russian uranium with a bunch of russian rich fuel with a bunch of waivers and whatnot we're going to link in the those those bills also and there's a tracker uh for the house bill just to, to, fo to follow the progress we're going to link that in also but News-wise this week, that's it, buddy. That's a pretty light week compared to what we've been pumping out. That's, yeah, thankfully. Uh, yeah, well, I guess I guess with that, we'll just get right on into the charts. So biggest thing I would say to be keeping in mind here as we keep eyes on the uranium space is that we're maybe getting our first signs of weakness in the broad market since the beginning of January. So we have this higher low every weekly candle pattern on the S&P 500 futures. And that has broken at this point. So weekly consolidation is underway, but you can see here, there's not much follow through at the moment. And that's because the primary subsectors within the S&P 500 have not broken their stair steps. So primarily that's XLF and QQQ that we're watching to see if they join in weekly consolidation. And if they do that, then we will see a more substantial pullback in the S&P 500. And if the S&P 500 is pulling back, then we're gonna to have to watch for potential that the uranium sector does the same. So for the time being though, we'll just go ahead and look at CCJ, the star of the sector. The show goes on, as was the, the title last week. The bulls are remaining strong. We're starting to see some cracks in the armor as we have lost the daily uptrend 
for the first time since these uh, January lows back here. But as we've been parroting every week, the daily 12 EMA remains the guide. So bears pushed below pretty good there on Friday, but as you can see, bulls bought up the dip. So our higher highs starting to not see as much follow through, potentially a sign of bull exhaustion. And bears followed through a bit with that, but they're going to need to follow through more by confirming a daily downtrend and getting below these daily EMAs. And that's important to keep in mind as we are in this monthly tightening range and we're up near resistance. So uh, it wouldn't be surprising to reject and continue to tighten up, but bears are not proving anything at this point. And that's that. So other notable things in the space, we've got U.UN remaining very strong. So it was looking after this pullback that maybe we've got some monthly consolidation um, or, or rejection from monthly resistance shaping up. But now with bulls getting to new highs, they're remaining in control. So we'll be watching this daily uptrend and that makes 1682 the most important level to hold. If that's lost, we would have some weekly consolidation underway. And as is the case with our other major miners, UEC, NXE, and UUU, U, if these weekly EMAs are held as support, then everything remains fine from the larger time frame perspectives. So we are coming into key resistance here, 1794. So all eyes are on that to see can bulls regain this monthly uptrend and increase. You know, on, on that note, by the way, Joe, uh, Sprott has um, added to their ATM one point something billion, 1.2, 1.5 billion. That's pretty uh, fast. So they've opened up that ATM and and they've been buying all week. You know, they, they, they're, they're grabbing like 100,000 pounds here and there. So uh, that thing uh, is active and the spot price itself is slowly ticking up. Right on. That's obviously what uranium bulls want to see across the board. Um, so, yeah, let's get into those other miners. It's really not a, a ton going on. We're pretty much sideways here. Um, we This is on the daily, and we can see bears are defending. We've got a double top at 410 on UEC. So when we zoom out to the weekly, that was bulls trying to set a weekly higher low here by breaking above the high of last week, but bears are defending it. So if they can take it down through this 375 low, then that will increase the odds here that we're gonna remain range bound on the monthly time frame. So we know bigger picture, nothing really changes on any of these charts until we break these monthly tightening ranges. So you or NXE rather, will pop on over to that. Was the only one of our liquid miners that did break its monthly range. We'll go out to the monthly. We had this monthly tightening range. Bulls broke above, no follow through. We know that's not a great look, but unless bears can take out this weekly 12 EMA, then bulls are still within a stone's throw of the highs. So that makes this 443 support the key level. If that's lost, then we'll be looking to see some monthly consolidation shape on up. And bulls will have a lot of room to form a monthly higher low off of the multi-bottom we've got down here just below 340. So weekly EMA is going to continue to be the guide here. And UUUU, we've got weekly consolidation underway as well. And weekly EMAs will be the guide here. If bulls hold these weekly, this weekly 12 EMA, then they remain uh, also within a stone's throw of these tops here. We've got the ultimate level at 824, but below that 797, and then our recent high here, 789. And bulls want to keep those in striking distance. If we lose these EMAs, then we're going to remain in this broader tightening range with a low, high, higher low, lower high, higher low. And the question is, do we have another lower high shaping on up here? So our ETFs, similar deal, similar look, all, gonna be all about this weekly 12 EMA and the low of last week here on URA 2159. That's the key support to hold. If that's lost, we're gonna be looking at this tightening range. It's a bit choppy, 
but you can kind of just view it as a low, high, higher low, and are we going to get another lower high here? And you can visualize it on the monthly a bit better. Are we going to get that lower high or not? All about the weekly 12 EMA. URNM, same deal, monthly tightening range. When we go into the weekly, weekly 12 EMA, acting as support, and that level there is 34.39. So uh, we'll check in on URNJ, and we can see it's a bit weaker than our other ETFs here. So the, the price action was pretty similar on these days, but when we look at like the URA and UR, or we'll just do URNM, you can see these guys are still holding that low from uh, Monday the 6th, whereas URN and and J has some relative weakness compared to that. So yeah, so the dynamic there may actually be because they don't have the the spot fund isn't in there, CCJ is not in there because um, Adam Prom's not in there. So it's some really stronger it's play on junior. So it, it makes sense that it would be weaker. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, oh, to think I almost didn't talk about the URA spy ratio. And almost got skipped right over. Let's get into that. So obviously monthly equilibrium we talk about every week here. And like the miners, it's going to be about this weekly 12 EMA. We've got bears trying to push below, and they certainly did, but bulls have snapped up the dip. So if we come back down below the low of the first week of February, then that would increase the odds that we are getting this monthly tightening range continuing to play on out. So just going to be watching that low. And, and that's pretty much it. And if bulls want to keep monthly resistance in the cards, they're going to need to get above the high of Friday, February 10th. Um, one last thing to talk about here, and then I'll be done. XLE. So we know the uranium space correlates with the energy sector a good bit. And Starting to see some weakness in the energy sector. It was looking like bulls were making a strong effort to stay range bound. But on Friday, bears put in a 3.56% downside day. So we're looking at this multi bottom down here. Lowest level is 82.65. So bulls have room to defend that. And even if that is lost, it's not an ultimate red flag because bigger picture, it's about this monthly 12 EMA. And if that level were to be lost, especially straight from here, we would then be quite extended as we test the monthly 12 EMA. And that's not the environment conducive for follow through for bears. So there'd be good odds that we'd at least get an, an initial bounce from there. But we do know if XLE loses the monthly 12 EMA, that will spell some trouble for the uranium space, most likely. So something to keep an eye on. And that level right now is like in the mid 80s. So that's all I've got this week as far as technicals. Pretty short one. Chris, you got some uh, some trade updates? Yeah, uh, I'll just go over the, the trades that I posted. Um, the first things first, uh, NXE, I bought back my calls this week. So uh, that was an 86% gainer. And now I have the ability to sell calls again. We'll see how that plays out. Um, DNN, that second half, uh, that stopped me out. So that trade ended up being slightly, slightly in profit, but nothing special to think about. Again, I hold cores and leaps. Um, Global Atomic, my stink bid hit. Now you can go back to, and we'll link it. Uh, you can go back to my financing video. Uh, uh, when they did their, their public offering. So that stink bid that I hit like 10%, that I put down 10% below all of this chop, it hit from that um, lawsuit FUD news that they got. So, you know, I got in on that with that stink bid, which is fine. You know, it's kind of what my plan was. Uh, I am still in my URNM puts. Uh, they're hedging my position, their protection. But I did put on two new trades this week. So the first one is AMLI. Uh, I got in on a half position at AMLI at 314. So my signal really was um, it took out this, this daily stair step. It took it out. So, you know, that was a little signal for me to, to get into a half position there. 
and I'm working off this 281. I'm not going to be sticking around if 281 breaks because we've got a gap down here. Um, good dip buying on the very next day, but I'm going to stick with my half position at the moment. Uh, you know, lithium has some interesting things going on, even though this is also a, a uranium play. It's also a lithium play, but, you know, SGML, Tesla, some news with them, maybe buying out that mine. LAC, uh, GM took a stake in that company for their lithium. So this could be a little bit of a sympathy play off that. So you are getting the lithium pop and the uranium pop if it happens. So I'm there. Uh, like I said, 281 hits, I stop out. Otherwise, I'm just going to kind of ride this, this half position up. The other trade that I took, and I again, I made a, a detailed video on URG uh, private placement, similar to the Global and Encore, but I took a, a half a position here as well. Where did I get that? Uh, $1.15. So I, I got a $1.15 half position fill on URG. I am going to be putting a stink bid in uh, probably just below a dollar, probably around like 98 cents. And at the end of the day, if 95 breaks down, I'm probably going to be out. Uh, really, 89 cents breaks down. But you can go look at the video there on, on URG, and I detail everything uh, that I'm looking at. But as far as trades are concerned, that's it. I have I didn't do much this week. So my ads are AMLI. Uh, Global Tom Extinct Bid, which is detailed in my financing video, URG half position on this private placement, and another half position stink bid down below two uh, below a dollar at ninety eight cents. So that's it at the moment. Well, that's a pretty quick week for us. We're we're at yep. seventeen minutes. We've been pushing thirty the last few episodes. So yeah, there's that just, you know to, there's really not much going on. So. Yeah, it's uh, that, that's the product of that. So we'll just have to watch and see what this broad market weekly consolidation looks like because, you know, bulls have been in control across the market for um, coming up on a couple months now. So if bears show up, sometimes it's good to kind of take a step back, let, you know, see what they've got. And if we do see more notable weekly consolidation, we'll certainly be tracking the health of it. And we'll have to see how the uranium space fares against it. So good time to maybe walk some stops up and uh, just see what we've got going on. Perhaps a bit of a market shift coming. The early signs of it are there, but bears the burden of proof is still on bears at the end of the day across yep. many sectors. So we'll have to see what yep. we get. All Enjoy right. the uh, Monday off of trading. Unless you're a crypto person. <laughs> or a futures person. We'll still have or a futures, uh, person, yes. futures markets. Uh, they'll have that midday break. But they're firing back off here tonight. A couple yeah, hours. We'll, uh, we'll catch you guys uh, during the week. Sounds good. Take care, everybody. We'll see you next time. Over and out. Over and out. Peace.